Hi friends, welcome to The Rookie Reader. I am Jennifer. So, I thought that this year it would be really fun, so the year of 2024, it would really be fun to mix things up on this channel and do things a little bit differently. Um, I've only made a few videos here. I've, I've been sharing like books that I've read that I enjoy that I consider like four and five stars and um, I wanna move away from that. Um, because by the time I'm ready to film that, I feel like I've forgotten a lot that I read in the books. And I thought it would be more fun to do this vlog style. So instead of sharing like with you at the end of reading a bunch of books, what I thought of them, I'm gonna share my thoughts and feelings of the books as I read them or listen to them on book because sometimes I listen to them on audiobook as well. So I thought a good place to start for picking out books this year would be the Goodreads Choice Awards. So let's take a look at that. I'm looking at my screen here. So I know you guys can't see it that well, so I'll tell you what it says. But um, so as far as the categories go, I thought we'd start with my favorite category first, which is mystery thrillers. So I'm gonna open that up. So the book that won mystery thriller of the year was The Housemaid's Secret, and I already read that. It's actually, I think, the only, yes, it's the only book on this list that I actually read from this category. But I was quite surprised that it won because I, um, it was good. I mean, I should say it was okay. It was, it was good. It was a good okay. <laughs> it was a four stars. It was a good follow-up book because it's a second book in a series. I liked the first um, Handmaid's, The Handmaid's, was it The, was it The Handmaid's Secret? No. I forgot what the name of the first one was. The hand, I wanna say The Handmaid's Tale, but that's not right either. Okay, it's gonna drive me crazy. Let me quickly look up what the other name is. Is it just The Housemaid? Is that what it was? Yes, it was just The Housemaid. Okay, that book that came out last year, I thought was absolutely amazing. I loved it. That's a five-star book for me. And I felt like The Handmaid, The Housemaid's Secret was just a good, solid follow-up, but not that great. Definitely not like enough to win a whole like category for the year. So instead of just picking like the top five books, because that's what I was originally thinking about doing, I want to read the ones that I'm most interested in. I think that would be more fun for me because <laughs> there might be like, I was looking at some of the different categories on here, like I was looking at the fiction and a couple of the top books just sound so depressing and I don't want to read depressing books or at least not at this moment. So um, let's start with, okay, so there's three books on here that I really wanna read and a possible fourth. So I really wanna read, here, let me show you the screen. Okay, so, I, so I've already read this. I really wanna read None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I think that sounds fascinating. Um, I wanna read The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Everyone that I like looked at that has re reviewed and read that book said it was like, well, the kind of book you just can't put down. Very good. I've heard really good things about this book, but I'm not that interested in it, so I don't know. Definitely interested in these two. And then the third one that I'm very interested in is Bright Young Women. So I think I'll start with these three, and then maybe I will also read this one. So those are the books you're gonna see me reading uh, and vlogging about um, in this video. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with None of This Is True. Okay guys, so I just wanted to do a quick check-in. I'm about a quarter of the way through the book. I am totally hooked. Like I was hooked from the very beginning. Um, so I'm listening to the audiobook because I'm currently working and in my home office. And um, so the thing is, is it says none of this is true, but so far, okay, so there's these two ladies and they, they run into each other on their birthday. They, have the, they share the same birthday, they were born in the same hospital on the same day, and then on their 45th birthday, they end up in the same restaurant. One of the ladies is had like not the best life, and then the other lady is more like, has, has like a more glamorous life. So the first lady, she is with her husband, who's much older than her. Um, she met him when she was 13 years old, and he was in his 40s, so huge age gap. 
and she's out to dinner with him and this other person she and i can't remember their names right now <laughs> unfortunately but the second character she is she came in with a big group of people and she's beautiful and glamorous and she has a podcast and she has a big house and a husband that's closer to her age and it just seems like she has such a better life than the other lady so um they they meet up in the women's restroom and they just happen to, you know, they just say like, hey, it's your birthday, it's my birthday too. And then they find out they were born in the same hospital on the same day. So the lady who does the podcast is doing a podcast about this other lady's life. And that's where I am right now in the book. But the thing is, is so far what I'm hearing, like things that she said, like other people are backing up her story. The woman, the, the pod, the woman who's the podcast is about, um, so there's, this is mixed media, so there's the story that's happening, there's a podcast that's happening, and then there's a doc, like a Netflix documentary about this woman and her husband and murder. And I don't know if they committed murders or if one of them was murdered or if she murdered, I don't know what that is. But based on what's happening in the documentary, the clips I've heard of the documentary, and then people who are corroborating her story for the podcast, Everything she's saying is being backed up by other people. So I don't know what parts are not true. Or is it the whole story in general? Is it this whole book that I'm reading that's completely not true? I don't know, I'm curious, I can't wait to find out. So um, yeah, I'm about a quarter of the way through. So I will check back in when I'm about halfway through. Okay, so I'm about three quarters of the way through the book and it's just so good, you guys. I'm really, really enjoying it. So. The character, I said I forgot the names before. So like the character that has the podcast, her name is, her name is Alex. And then the girl that she is, or the woman that she is interviewing, that is Josie. So Josie is the one that I believe is lying. This, where it says none of, so the name of the book is none of this is true. I feel like it's Josie that's lying, but she mixes it with facts. So it's hard to tell what's a lie and what's not a lie. And you know, I have some, like some thoughts that I think, okay, maybe this part is a lie or maybe this part is true, but I have no idea <laughs> for sure about anything. I feel like, like things are about to get like, like there's gonna be like, like something is a bit big is about to happen. I feel, I just feel it. And I don't want to ruin anything for you guys, but um, it's good. I'm enjoying it. Hi guys. Okay, so I just finished None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at my computer. It was excellent. It was amazing. So the winner of the Good Reader's Choice Award this year was the House Made Secret by Frieda McFadden, which I've already read, and I give it a four star. I think it was like a solid follow-up. I don't know if I've already said that in this video already, but it wasn't, I can't believe it won, like the whole category. So uh, the next highest rated book was, which is the one I just read, none of this is true, and it's like so much better. It's so much better than The House Made Secret. I, I'm surprised it didn't beat it. Um, so now I'm gonna read the third most popular one, or I'm gonna listen to on audiobook, and it is, so the third most popular one is Riley Sager's The Only One Left. So that's what I'm gonna start listening to right now, and I will check in with you guys a little bit later. Hi guys, just checking in. So I'm about a quarter of the way through The Only One Left by Riley Sager, and this is my first Riley Sager book, so I don't know if it's his writing style that I'm not, crazy about or if it's this book, but um, I'm just now at a quarter of the way through like starting to be interested. It took me like a long time to care about what was happening in the story. Where the book I just read before this, um, the None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell, like I was hooked from the beginning and I loved it and I loved like every second of it. This one has been a different kind of slow burn for me. So. The background of the story is there's a young caretaker who has been hired to care for this elderly woman and she's a very wealthy woman. She lives in this mansion on a cliff and she is notorious in her town. She's kind of like the Lizzie Borden of her town. So she was accused of killing all of her family members back in the 1920s. This book takes place in the 1980s, so 60 years after the murders 
and she was accused of killing her father, her mother, and her sister. So this caregiver has come to her home to, to take care of her, and the woman can no longer talk. So um, there's just there's some mystery elements here. You know, did she actually kill her family? We don't know. Is and then the caregiver, she has a little mystery in her background as well because she recently had a patient die um, under her watch under like some suspicious circumstances. So there's, you know, you're questioning, did she help facilitate <laughs> the passing of her patient or did this patient die on their own? So there's some mysteries on both sides and um, I'm just now starting to get interested a quarter of the way through. So I'm going to keep going. I heard that it's a really good book. I heard that people love this book. So um, I'm feeling hopeful <laughs> that it's going to be more engaging. But at this point, it's not like the first one I just read for this vlog. The first one I read for this vlog, I was just like, from the get go, I was hooked and I just wanted to hear more and more and more and I just didn't want to stop. So we'll see. We'll keep going. Hi guys. So it is Saturday. No. Sunday afternoon. Um, I have already finished work for the day. I had a bunch of errands to run. I did all that. I did some work in my Etsy shop and now I am taking the afternoon off. It is a gloomy cold day. Like you can tell like how dark my room is and I'm switching from the audiobook to my Kindle and I am going to continue reading the book. Um, I'm really into it now. I'm still not even halfway done, but it's getting really good and I want to keep reading. So I, I decided I don't want to just listen to it. I want to actually read it. So I'm going to be reading, um, in my bed for a few hours and just taking the afternoon off. Hi guys. So I finished reading The Only One Left by Riley Sager. It was so good. So good. So, so for the last half of the book, I read instead of listened to it. And I think... So it's hard to tell because I was kind of annoyed by the narrator's voice and that's, and that like, you know, I don't know, that kind of may have affected how I felt at the beginning of the book, but also too, I felt like it was a bit of a slow burn at first where um, none of this is true was like good from like the opening line until the very last line. It was good the whole way through. But this one it was so good. The second half was so good and I like, uh, it's like to me right now between like trying to decide which one is the best between those two, like it's really hard to pick. Um, definitely both of them are better than The Housemaid Secret. The Housemaid Secret was good, but now compared to these two, like these two were like really, really good. So um, I don't want to give anything away about the only one left. Let me just say it was a wild ride. It was quite an adventure at the end. And like, I actually, I read the ending twice because I had like so much I, to absorb that I went back. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna read this, uh, this ending again. So good. So let's take a look at what's left on the list. Okay, so next highest rated book was Richard Osman's The Last Devil to Die. And this is book four in a series. So I think I'm gonna skip that one for now just because I haven't read any of the other ones and I kind I think I might do that at some point read all of them because I heard this book is really good but um, I just don't want to read the fourth book <laughs> in a series so I'm gonna skip that one I'm also skip skipping this one Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers simply because I'm just not interested in the con and that just it just it's not interesting to me. So I'm going to go to this one, Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. So this will be the final book that I read for this vlog. But what I understand about the book before I get into it is that it's, uh, in, it's, it's a fiction. So it's not, you know, it's, so it's inspired by, but not a direct like retelling of the Ted Bundy murders or so. So Ted Bundy is an infamous serial killer from the 1970s. He broke into a sorority and killed a bunch of women in the sorority and then killed also other women outside of that, that one night. But this is a fictional retelling. So I don't know if it's the same people. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm hoping for, but I've heard it's really, really good. I mean, it's a tragic event, but what they, the idea of the book is they're not going to talk about Ted Bundy at all, who became almost, you know, he was like, made into a celebrity almost. You know, there were like books written about him, TV shows, movies, like, so it's not about the murderer. It's about the women that were murdered, the bright young women. So anyways, I think I'm doing a terrible job explaining the premise of the book, <laughs> but I've heard good things about it. I'm excited to read it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey guys, so it has been several days since I had checked in with you guys. It's funny because I had to go back and watch the last clip because I couldn't even remember where, at what point I was at, like where I had updated you guys. And I realized I'm wearing the same shirt today that I was wearing in that clip, but it is a different day. Well, you can tell because my hair is curly today instead of being straightened. Anywho, um, the reason why it's been several days is uh, Christmas happened. So I had family in town and, and I just haven't had time to like sit down and update you guys. So I'm three quarters of the way book, I mean done, th three quarters of the way through the book. So I'm almost done and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna finish it today. And I wanted to give you an update before I finish it. So when I got about the halfway mark, I almost DNF'd it. You know, I feel bad because it started out so good and then it just got, for me, it got really boring. And then I gave it another shot. I didn't DNF it, I gave it another shot. And I thought, if I look at it from a different perspective, instead of looking at it and expecting it to be a mystery thriller, I'm now looking at it as literary fiction. And as literary fiction, it's amazing. As long as I'm not expecting it to be a mystery thriller. That's just my opinion. I don't know why it's considered a mystery thriller. Like. There is no mystery. We know who committed the murders from the very beginning of the book. So yeah, but, but as a literary fiction, I think it's great and I wanna finish it. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up. And then when I come back, I'll tell you what I think, but I also wanna give you, like I wanna rate, rank all the books that I read in this vlog. I'm gonna rank them all from what I think is the best to the like least best. <laughs> okay. Hi guys, so I just finished Bright Young Women. I actually finished it the next day. <laughs> yesterday I said, I think I'm gonna finish it today. I didn't finish it yesterday, I finished it today. Um, so here's my final thoughts on it. First of all, it's a four star. Um, so it's a good book, but it is definitely not a mystery thriller. It's not a mystery, it's not a thriller. It is fiction or even historical fiction, because, well, it, it jumps in time, but there is a big historical part of it. But I consider it more literary fiction, and once I stopped expecting it to be a mystery thriller, I enjoyed it much more. But trying to enjoy it as a mystery thriller was terrible, because first of all, what happened was, like for me, it's a real event, and I just, I find it really disturbing, and I just, I don't know, I just, I didn't enjoy it as entertainment in that way. Um, as a mystery thriller, but as more of a historical fiction or literary fiction, I thought it was good. So personally, if I were reading these four books for the Goodreads um, Choice Awards for the category of mystery thriller, I would say the very top, the best one was None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. That was my absolute favorite. I keep thinking about it. Like that's a sign of a good book for me if I keep thinking about it after I've read it. The second one, the Only One Left by Riley Sager. That's number two for me. Number three would be The Housemaid's Secret. I think The Housemaid's Secret was, I didn't talk a lot about it in this, in this vlog because I had already read it before I did the vlog. I think that it was a good follow-up, a good second book, but it wasn't original enough or even engaging enough to win the, the category for this year. I mean, it was a solid four-star book, but definitely not like the top. Not as good as None of This Is True or The Only One Left Behind. And then the very bottom <laughs> would be Bright Young Women. Um, in strictly for this category. Like if I were to put it in a different category with literary fiction, I don't know where I would place it. But in this category, it's definitely the fourth <laughs> out of the four that I read. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I plan on making more videos like this this year. So if you're interested in this kind of video content, I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay, see you next time. Bye.